Uh, welcome again. This is our uh, fourth uh, podcast in this series about the spirit and the power of Elijah. Again, just to, to give a little bit of a review, we're, uh, we've been talking about messengers, master builders, and forerunners as being the function of uh, messengers, to define the function of messengers, master builders, and forerunners, whereas the spirit and power of Elijah is the empowerment upon that. Again, we talked about the spirit of Elijah as being that part of the anointing that gives one the desire uh, and the burden to make a people ready for the coming of the Lord. And the power of Elijah is the empowerment to produce the results of that uh, of that call, which may or might, may or may not include signs of wonders. Now, in this fourth podcast, what I want to talk about is the effect of the spirit and the power of Elijah being upon your life. Uh, and so I want you to just use this to see, uh, is this something that is on my life now, or do I need to uh, receive that impartation? Uh, because uh, now maybe not all of these, but, but some of these would be, should be on your life if you're operating in that anointing. You can be doing the function, uh, without that impartation, but if you're walking in that impartation, some of these things should be characteristic in your life. So I have seven of them, and so I have to go through them really fairly quickly. But uh, you'll get the picture or get the thought, and you can take them back to the Lord and and ask Him. Okay, am I really walking uh, in these things? In these seven things, these seven uh, aspects or uh, manifestations of the Spirit, the power. Of Elijah. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first one, uh, and some of these we've kind of touched on earlier, but the first one is that the spirit and the power of Elijah changes the life of the forerunner. It changes the life of the forerunner. Uh, and I shared this in uh, in the last podcast about how it changed has changed my life, and other the, uh, several of the podcasts actually how it's changed uh, my life, uh, where. I was content doing other things in, within the body of Christ, not, not within ministry, within, uh, you know, legitimate ministry. I'm not talking about error or compromise. I'm talking about legitimate ministry. But when, when I received that, it changed my life. It began to really, uh, in my case, refine my call uh, to where I am now. I knew then, and it's grown over the years, but uh, I have... No, this is my call in life, uh, is to be that forerunner, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so when you receive that spirit and power of Elijah, it should impact you in some way to change your life. I mean, for some people, it changes their entire ministry. Uh, for us, it changed our entire ministry from a uh, community church perspective approach, uh, even somewhat seeker-sensitive to uh, to a forerunner ministry to make ready a people prepared for the Lord and to be a base for missions, to be a base to reach out with that call to others. So it's changed uh, my life and it's changed uh, our church. Uh, the second aspect, a way you know the impact or effect of the Spirit and the power of Elijah, is the Spirit and the power of Elijah is the anointing that equips forerunners with the fresh revelation needed to prepare the way of the Lord's coming and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, um, this is so true. Um, you know, I know a lot of you and are have been touched by some of the revelation in life school uh, that Brian and I have, have written and communicated. And it is Especially in Africa, is really is a total, almost a totally different message than is being taught uh, in much of the church, and it's true even in America. It, there's, it's a totally, it's a very different church, a very different message. Uh, but the revelation that has led to that message came as a result of the impartation of the Spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, it didn't just, it wasn't just uh, injected or downloaded over a a few minutes of time or a few days. This was over years. Uh, but as just, I'll just take uh, the book of Esther for, a, for an example, or book of Song of Solomon. 
you know, as you begin to, with this anointing, as you begin to study these different books, and, you know, the same would be true for the, some of the parables and the stories of Jesus related to the end times and the, the wedding feast and all that, then the Lord begins to give you revelation about all of this that you didn't have before. And it grows and there's more and more and more, and we're still on a journey. We're still learning and we'll be learning until we... we uh, meet the Lord, and probably even after that, we'll be learning, even in eternity, more and more and more about Christ and His kingdom. Uh, but it definitely changed the anointing upon my life. The revelation increased, the, level, the revelation uh, uh, grew, and the revelation began to focus on making people ready, making people ready for the second coming of Christ. Uh, the third one of these effects. Is that the spirit and power of Elijah uh, empowers transformation in the church. Uh, it will transform your church. Now, uh, you know, uh, like Elijah, sometimes as leaders, you probably feel like I do, like Elijah said, I, I alone am left as a prophet of the Lord. And, you know, Baal has all these other prophets. And you feel, you know, a lot of times after Sunday morning message, you feel like, uh, you feel depressed and you feel discouraged because you feel like there's been no transformation, no impact, no nothing is happening. And uh, that's true with all of us. But it will, over time, bring transformation in the church, especially for everyone who has a receptive heart. Those who have a receptive heart to hear, they will be changed over time. It may be subtle, it may be slow, it may be Im almost imperceptible uh, to you, but you will you look back over the transformation from five years before or ten years before, and you'll be amazed at what uh, is happening. So the spirit and power of Elijah will uh, bring transformation into the church. Uh, the next point is that the spirit and power of Elijah empowers forerunners to stand against the forces that would oppose the emergence of, of the church into God's eternal purpose. Now that's a lot of words, but basically the spirit and power of Elijah is the anointing that will allow you to participate in spiritual warfare against uh, those issues that are coming to hinder, to oppose, to stop the church from maturing in these calls of a bride made ready and mature sons and all of the different things that are part of the forerunner call. Um, if you'll note, if you'll remember, Elijah, he rebuilt the altar, which was a, basically a word to the church, to restore the church, but he also confronted the prophets of, of Asherah and the prophets of, uh, of Baal. He confronted, the, the, he confronted Ahab and he confronted Jezebel. Ahab is a type and shadow of the Antichrist system, Antichrist government, and the systems of, the, of this world. Uh, Jezebel is a type and shadow of the culture, uh, of the culture of immoral, corrupt culture that's permeating the earth right now. And so this, this anointing will empower forerunners to stand in intercession. Now we have to be cautious. We don't, you know, say to the world ruler, come down and sit in the dust. We, what we do is we declare written judgments, we pray in accordance with uh, the authority that we have, and there's, we have a whole class on eternal purpose prayer, which was part of the Forerunner School that, we will, that I just finished writing a, a couple of months ago, and we'll get into that at an appropriate time. But uh, this anointing will empower you to stand and pray effectively there. The next point is the Spirit and Power of Elijah uh, is the empowerment that leads forerunners to lay down their lives, their ministry dreams, and their church programs to follow in the steps of Elijah, Elisha, and John the Baptist. Now, we've talked a good bit about that, but just a word or two on it. It certainly did that with us. Um, uh, you know, there are a lot of different streams in the body of Christ, and a lot of them are, are good. Uh, they're not all uh, bad. Some are, but a lot of them are good. But this anointing will cause you to, to restrict your call. And you need to realize this. Uh, over the years, it's restricted our call where we've quit doing a lot of the things that other churches might do 
to focus on this one thing. Um, so it will impact you uh, in that way. Uh, the next point is that the spirit and power of Elijah will be transferred from one generation to the next until uh, the Lord returns. Uh, we got this verse of scripture in 2011 uh, from Noel Mann. He, he uh, gave it to us prophetically, and I believe it's for, for all those who want to be a part of this forerunner call and part, be anointed with the spirit and the power of Elijah. He said, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit, uh, in the prophetic word, the spirit and power of Elijah, uh, which is upon you in my words, uh, the, the prophetic word, the forerunner message, which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from you, not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your offspring, nor from the mouth of your offspring, offspring, says the Lord, from now and forever. So claim that verse. It's Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21. Uh, very important verse. And I believe that can be true for you and your family, uh, your church, uh, and through one generation to another. If you look at the life of Elijah, uh, uh, Elijah uh, or Elisha took the mantle of Elijah. And then even one of Elisha's disciples anointed Jehu. Jehu is a type and shadow of Christ at his second coming. He came and he, he destroyed, he killed Jezebel, and he also uh, wiped out the entire house of Ahab. Ahab had already died, but his entire line was wiped out by Jehu. He eliminated uh, Ahab and Jezebel from Israel. Uh, so it was like three generations, in a sense, of spiritual sons uh, that this anointing was transferred to. I believe that this anointing, uh, which is now in the church and being released, will be here until the Lord returns. It's not going to be just something that's a, a passing uh, fad, like so many things in the body of Christ. It will be here until the Lord returns. It may manifest in different ways. It may, uh, you, you know, take on different portions and, and uh, ways, but the, the anointing will be here until the Lord returns. Now, the uh, the last point is that the spirit and power of Elijah is a specific anointing giving, given for a specific purpose upon the fivefold ministry and the larger body of believers. Now, here's what I, all I want to say about that. We've talked a good bit about that type of thing already, but this is important. You know there's the fivefold ministry. There's the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, and the evangelist. There are five aspects, the five-fold ministry. If you are an apostle, uh, you can be an apostle without being anointed with the spirit and power of Elijah. You can be a prophet without that, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist. You can be any of those things without this specific anointing. Now, if your role is a prophet uh, and you're anointed with the spirit and the power of Elijah, you will still be a prophet. Uh, now, the Lord could change that role, function over time as you mature and grow older or whatever. Uh, sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. But if you're, whether you're a pastor or a prophet or an apostle or whatever the function, the spirit and the power of Elijah is a specific mode of operation, a specific anointing within that call. If you're an apostle, it doesn't change you to make you not an apostle. You're still that. So whatever the role is, now that can change over time, but the point I'm trying to make is that it's not just like the six-fold ministry. It's not the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, and the spirit and the power of Elijah. These are functional things within the five-fold anointed in that. And so, you know, a lot of times we talk about the messenger as the prophet and the master builder as the apostle. And those are certainly true ideas. Uh, but the anointing upon those just changes your focus within those calls as a messenger or a prophet, uh, a master builder, or a, uh, an apostle. It changes your focus. Uh, so it doesn't change you from that fivefold call, but it empowers you with a specific fire in your heart and desire 
and empowerment for a specific function that is much needed in the church today. So let's close with that. Um, what I will we'll do is uh, I will email you the notes to session five of, the, of this class so that you can have uh, all of this in writing. And uh, we, my prayer is when we see each other again, hopefully next year, when we see each other again, we'll be able to pray for you uh, to release that impartation uh, of the spirit and the power of Elijah. So not that you have to have us to do that, but we would like to be to, excuse me, to participate with you in that call. So let's go forth as forerunners, as end time messengers, as end time master builders, anointed in the spirit and the power of Elijah. God bless you.